ערב טוב. It is a distinct pleasure and honor to celebrate the publication of Vivian Liska's new book, German Jewish Thought and Its Afterlife, a Tenuous Legacy. Vivian has been a distinguished visiting professor at the Hebrew University since 2013, and from the very outset, it seemed difficult to imagine how we ever managed without her. That so many friends and colleagues have come to celebrate this occasion with Vivian is an indication of the deep personal and professional ties that she has fostered in Jerusalem over the past few years. Truly phenomenal. And I'm very happy to see many family members here as well, so Um It is impossible to list all of Vivian's affiliations, collaborative projects, and publications. I discover new ones daily. Um, but let me mention some of the major ones. Vivian Liska is professor of German literature and director of the Institute of Jewish Studies at the University of Antwerp and a distinguished visiting professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. She is the editor and co-editor of many books, among them the two-volume ICLA publication Modernism, which was awarded the prize of the Modernist Studies Association. Most notably, she's the editor of the Greutel's new book series, Perspectives on Jewish Texts and Contexts. The first books came out about three years ago, and since then it's become an empire. There's sort of seven books out, and many more in the making, and I know some of you are the authors and co-editors of, of these books. In 2011, she was awarded the Cross of Honor of the Republic of Austria for Science and the Arts. Vivian is the author of several books, among them monographs on Paul Celan and Elze Lasker Schiller. Recent books include Georgia Gamben's Empty Messianism, it was translated into Hebrew as well, and When Kafka Says We, Uncommon Communities in German Jewish Literature. And this book, too, will be out in Hebrew soon, right? German Jewish thought and its afterlife is in many ways the pinnacle of Vivian's work, a book that will become a landmark in the field of German Jewish thought and literature and beyond. The crowning achievement of her many contributions to making the German Jewish nexus such a pivotal topic in the humanities today. German Jewish thought and its afterlife revolves around the changing perspectives on messianism, law, exile, election, remembrance, and the transmission of tradition itself in three intellectual frameworks, German Jewish modernism, postmodernism, and contemporary theory. Among the protagonists of the book are thinkers and writers as different as Kafka, Benjamin, Scholem, Arendt, and Celan. Liska underscores the Jewish dimension of their work and follows the intricate history of its reception, first in the theories of Blanchot and Derrida, and then in the writings of contemporary thinkers such as Agamben, Zizek, and Badou. To read this book means to plunge into an incredible world of intense dialogues and conversations. To provide you with a preliminary taste of the book, I'll focus for a moment on the chapter regarding Kafka's reinvention of the Book of Job. With characteristic intellectual passion known to all of your friends, colleagues, students, Vivian wanders between the Sholem Benjamin exchange, Agamben's response to Benjamin's Kafka and to Derrida's essay on Kafka's Before the Law, not to mention Margaret Zussman and Max Brod, with their respective responses to the Jobin dimension in Kafka's work. To follow Vivian through this web of responses and responses to responses means to step into a remarkable intellectual drama between great minds. The Sholem Benjamin dialogue is exemplary. Between 1925 and 1938, they exchanged numerous letters on Kafka. It's really a, a remarkable um, correspondence. Scholem maintained that one must view Kafka's world in a theological light, the one permeated by darkness. So mercilessly, the light of revelation never burnt before, writes uh, Scholem uh, to uh, Benjamin. And Benjamin, in turn, does not quite accept Scholem's negative theology. I endeavored to show, he responds, how Kafka sought 
on the nether side of that nothingness, in its inside lining, so to speak, to feel his way to redemption. So it's definitely not full-fledged redemp redemption, but it's sort of feeling his way to redemption. Benjamin finds this uh, concealed spark in the paw of the Agadah, in the Agadic elements of the Talmud, in the refusal to submit to doctrine, doctrine or the law. Benjamin, however, neither perceives the law as merely tyrannical nor endorses lawlessness. It is debatable, he writes, whether Kafka is devoted to elevating the law or burying it. Vivian not only offers an astute account of the nuances of these different readings of Kafka and Joe, she too steps into the drama and takes sides. I mean, it's true of the book of the whole, as a whole, but definitely of this uh, portion of it. Um, and um, sides primarily with Benjamin, a bit with early Scholem, but in fact she invents a, her own Job in Kafka beyond Benjamin and Scholem. Through a brilliant exegetical move, she turns Kafka's piece, The Other Abraham, into a Kafkaesque version of another Job. Kafka's other Job, like his other Abraham, we discover, was not engaged in metaphysical quarrels with God. His unsettling spirit is embodied, above all, in a gesture of deferral. Kafka's Abraham, as one recalls, does not refuse to sacrifice his son, but instead tries to postpone the fulfillment of the law. In his reply to God's demand, he claims that he cannot get away from home. He is indispensable. The household needs him. <clears throat> there is always something that must be attended to. The house isn't finished. Similarly, Kafka's Job wouldn't be the kind of Job who accuses God, on the one hand, but neither would he be someone who submits himself to divine rule in dust and ashes. Instead, this other Job would insist on avoiding closure. He would try to avert God's attention from him, and his favorite verses would be, am I the sea or the dragon, hayamanim tanim, that you set a watch over me? Or will you not look away from me for a while? A little less attention? <laughs> the Kafka Job connection was the point of departure of my conversations with Vivian way back. Um, but on reading the book recently, I realized that so many other dialogues have evolved over the past few years. It was so exciting to witness the growth of this project and equally exciting to see it in book form uh, at the moment. Before we move on to our speakers, let me say that it is a great pleasure to host this event at the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel School for Advanced Studies in the Humanities. And I'm very grateful to Professor Israel Yuval, who just came back, um, <coughs> the academic head of Mandel School for his generous support. I'm also grateful to Ira Dostov, Shiri Azulai, Liron Barhu, Miri Avisar, and Shachar Livne for their help in organizing this evening.